Hey, what's up everyone? Nick here from The Real Hero Show. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are going to be covering Titans Season 3, Episodes 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I will be going over full spoilers, uh, so if you haven't yet watched this season, uh, I do suggest you go check it out. Uh, and if you haven't watched any of the Titans seasons, then I would uh, highly advise you to go check out the first and second season and then come back and watch season three and then watch our video here. Uh, but if you haven't seen any of these seasons of Titans and you just want to see what we have to say, uh, and maybe that's enough for uh, to help you decide to watch the, the seasons and show itself, uh, then by all means, continue along with me here. So uh, before we dive in, uh, if you're new to the channel here, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, help support the channel, grow our community here. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button as well and turn on the bell for future notifications for all of our future content. Cool, well, let us dive in. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cover some points, uh, my notes here from the three episodes, uh, and I'm gonna give an overall rating for these three episodes because they definitely feel like a three-part uh, connectivity here. So um, the first thing is in, in episode one entitled Barbara Gordon here uh, is the fact that uh, she's in a wheelchair and she is the commissioner uh, who talks a little bit with uh, Dick Grayson throughout the episode, tries to, you know, um, uh, help him out with any uh, details uh, upon this new killer uh, in Gotham. There's, uh, you know, several people that are dead now. Uh, you know, we do get to see uh, a little bit of uh, Jason Todd, who um, uh, likes to hit some sort of uh, uh, new drug enhancement from the chemistry books that he's started to read. And apparently he doesn't like reading or doesn't really know how to read. Uh, but he knows how to do chemistry, so um, that's an interesting point. Uh, not to say that Jason Todd can't figure things out, but um, it's going to be interesting to speak to his uh, character in this uh, in this show. Um, it's it's pretty interesting how uh, Robin is presumably killed by the Joker, uh, and if anyone's familiar with the comics, we know uh, how that kind of gets tied in um, in because of this act bruce uh batman uh finally snaps breaks his one rule and kills the joker uh i know that they weren't really able to show that um but we do get a scene where uh, bruce um enters the room uh, in, in wayne manor where uh dick grayson is uh, sleeping but wakes up to bruce with a crowbar of some kind or a, uh, a golf club and uh just blood on it and he says like be a better batman and and disappears in normal batman fashion um so what does it really mean to be a better batman uh because the batman in this show um is a little bit different than we what we've seen from batmans in previous shows uh, and in the comics so uh it'll be interesting to see how uh, dick grayson uh, transcends throughout the season as uh nightwing and maybe becoming a, a different version of of batman himself um so we'll see how again the rest of the season resides um as far as the rest of season one goes um it's it, it was enough to think for me to uh, keep watching uh even though i'm <laughs> just gonna watch anyway as for as far as making my interest go up along the way for this season uh, i think this first episode was probably one of the better ones uh in terms of the uh three seasons itself for the show um I one question i had at the end of the first season was uh did the titans or did uh did bruce batman fail jason and todd uh, as a teammate, as a uh, adopted son, as a protege, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, I think in some cases uh, they all failed them. Uh, I think everyone is responsible for the path that Jason takes. Um, you know, if your teammate is uh, you know feeling low, I think as a teammate's job is to help bring them up and help to help them out. Especially, um, you know, if you're uh, teaching someone, if you have a protege, the the object is to not let them fall and to be to be better than than uh, you are. Um, so Batman kind of failed with that. So, uh, as far as episode two goes, uh, entitled, uh, Red Hood, um, there's a scene where the, uh, all the gangs, the crime lords are gathered around, um, you know, 
they talk about the Joker. Is Batman finally killing people now? Should they be worried? Uh, we see the Red Hood entrance, which, uh, you know, his, his uh, helmet looks a little interesting. It looks very um, uh, cyborg-y, um, like robotic almost. Um, and I don't know if they were trying to play off of like a, or mimic something that the way uh, Deadpool's uh, mask looks like, but um, it had a little bit of a similarity there. Um, and that scene um, with Red Hood and he kills one of the, the crime lords or thugs there, uh, it almost seemed reminiscent of uh, the Dark Knight when uh, Joker comes in with the crime lords are all gathered around and he says, you know, want to see a magic trick and, you know, Sam's one guy's head on the table with the pencil. You know, he kills one to make an example of, um, um, you know, people might think that that was a cool homage, a callback, or maybe just a ripoff and cheesy. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, we see that Hank's a police officer now, trying to do something else as far as, um, you know, not being uh, a titan. But uh, we also see him getting into the suit later on. Um I thought the the part where uh, there's the telephone call with the girl um, that's that's speaking with Dick Grayson or, or Nightwing, and uh, the, her arm just starts going crazy, and she says, "Make it stop, make it stop," and she just twists her own neck and kills herself. Uh, a little gruesome, but um, kind of wild at the same time. Uh, and for those of you who may not know why uh, Barbara is in a wheelchair, uh, this is actually a callback. I like the fact that they did. Um, it's a reference to the Killing Joke comic, uh, and there's the animated show, um, their little short movie about it as well, that's on HBO Max, uh, so you can watch that if you don't feel like buying or reading the comics, um, but essentially Joker, uh, shoots her, shoots Barbara Gordon, and it, uh, severs her spine, so she's, um, a, uh, paraplegic, uh, permanently, and, um, uh, I thought the... Uh, actress's uh, job who who portrayed uh, Barbara Gordon in this uh, show uh, did an excellent job um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing more of her uh, in the, in this season uh, we get to see Scarecrow um, who apparently is Gotham PD's profiler portrayed by uh, Vincent uh, Carthizer I might be um, botching his last name but it's uh, uh, the gentleman from Mad Men um, I haven't seen him something in a while, so it was kind of cool to see him. Um, although I, apparently he, there are some allegations of him uh, acting up on set. Um, and he might not be coming back for a fourth season. So tisk 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 there. Um, uh, I do like some of the chess referencing um, with the birds opening. You know, we recently got a series on Netflix called The Queen's Gambit. Um, so, you know, int interesting is how this plays a factor into what Jason Todd is kind of luring the Titans into. Um, and of course, at the end of that episode, Nightwing uh, breaks the mask when uh, Nightwing and uh, Red Hood are uh, fighting one on one. Nightwing, uh, Dick Grayson, realizes it's Jason. Jason's not dead. Um, you know, so he's apparently buried next to Alfred. Which is something else that Bruce says that Alfred has passed away, uh, which Alfred has apparently passed away between seasons two and three. Um, not something that I guess we really needed to see, but it's kind of one of those plot points where they mention it, it happened, let's move on. And I guess it's not really about Alfred, much like the show is not supposed to be about Batman, even though I think we've gotten more Batman uh in this season that we have in the previous two seasons um, i might be wrong about that but i'm pretty sure that his screen time and his mentioning alone is more than the first and second season um so as far as season or sorry as far as uh, episode three goes entitled hank and dove uh going right after uh, episode two uh dick digs up jason's grave there's not a, there's no body in it um so everyone has to discuss what's going on and and hank um, it has to remind the team it, this isn't Jason anymore. This is he's our enemy. We have to put him down if it comes down to it. Um, you know, we get more of the tension between um, Hank and and and, uh, and Don about uh, you know Hank's actions, their the relationship. Um, I kind of thought we might be we, we might be done with that. Um, and if, you know, unfortunately, after this episode, we we are done with that. Um, and uh, 
part of this episode I didn't really like, and I understand it might have been necessary for the episode and for the plot of the season itself. A um, little cliche and uh, expected, but Jason calls Hank. It's a setup. Uh, you know, Hank goes through um, having to strip down naked, taking a cab, and smashing his phone. Gets you know knocked out from uh, Jason, and uh, uh, Hank gets back to um, Titans. But there's a prototype, a one of a kind, unique. Wayne tech device implanted in his chest uh, not meant for extraction uh, and it's not a timer of time of seconds that's on there it's it's a, a timer or a, uh, a, a tracker of the amount of heartbeats he has left in his life which they equate to about four and a half hours um, and while that's going on uh, you know there's Another plot point, which again is a little cliche, the the lover of uh, former lover of Hank, you have got Don or Dove, that gets uh, baited into uh, finding Jason and Red Hood uh, down and killing him in order to save Hank. Meanwhile, you've got Connor, aka Superboy, who is tasked with trying to develop a way to unravel the puzzle of the Wayne Tech uh, prototype that is implanted in in, uh, in Hank's chest. Um, so as Superboy is uh, speeding through the amount of ways to reduce the uh, likelihood of it failing until he gets to 100% uh, efficiency, um, which he does at the end of the episode. Um, but the interesting part about when Dove... Uh, faces off with Red Hood. Of course, Nightwing shows up uh, and they fight over the the gun that Jason has, uh, or Red Hood has provided Dove with saying, if you kill me, I will save Hank with this little remote detonator that I have here. Uh, but he pulls a fast one. And as Dove pulls the trigger on the gun aimed at, at Red Hood, doesn't fire anything. And then Jason says, oops, that's actually the trigger, is the trigger of the gun that makes Hank's bomb in his chest uh, stop with five seconds left. And that just as uh, Connor has found a way to save Hank, and he's speeding through the house or the, the mansion, Wayne Manor, uh, their headquarters to save Hank, he gets to the room right as the uh, bomb goes off. And I thought that was actually really uh, well, really cool uh, how the effect happens and, and Connor just goes in there and it's all slow motion happening as he's just super speeding into it. And uh, it's kind of sad, obviously, at the same time uh, because Hank's clearly dead and, and all over the place. Um, but Connor just has to see that. And, of course, um, um, <laughs> the dog kind of it was there too, which I kind of forgot about. I'm like, oh yeah, the the dog's in there. Whoops. Uh, but he's fine, uh, thankfully. No no animals were harmed in the filming of this episode. Um, but the the sad part is Connor would have saved them, and um, you know Don is uh, extremely distraught uh, because uh, she basically ended Hank's life early. Um, so. Sad way to close out episode three uh, in this little three-part uh, connected episode here or um, arc uh, with uh, uh, Hank and Dove, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting how they didn't call it Hank and Don, um, and I wonder if that's just a call to where um, you know maybe Don has just maybe she goes off the deep end here and all she really wants to do is kill Jason. Um, there's no hope um, with him, but uh, we'll see how the the rest of the season goes. A um, couple takeaways I had uh, as far as, you know, they could have just sent Connor to find and stop Jason. Um, you know, it's kind of the same thing where, like, why not just send Superman to go, you know, finish the job easy because Superman's OP. Uh, Connor could have done the same thing with just speeding around and finding Jason and stopping him, but that would sort of make all the other characters um, uh, pointless and seem a little bit less. So I get that, but at the same time, they made Connor handle the tech and use 
his uh, speed to find a solution that way. So, uh, and the unfortunate part was it was all for naught, um, which kind of sucks at the same time. Um, you know, I think the acting overall from everyone was pretty good. Um, although I, I'll, I mentioned again, I think the highlights of uh, people um, in this were from uh, from Barbara Gordon and uh, Corey, uh, aka Starfire. So, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that we get more action out of the uh, next ten episodes from this uh, entire season three here. Um, based on the uh, trailer that we get after the uh, after episode three. Um, it seems like there's a lot. Um, of course, we haven't seen some other characters. Like we we don't uh, we haven't seen Rachel yet because she's off uh, trying to bring uh, Donna back from the dead, which it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So uh, I don't think she'll be able to save uh, Hank either. Um, not sure if we see more of Bruce uh, or Batman. Um, do we want to see more of him? What do you guys think? You know, or should we not see any more of Bruce for this season and maybe see more, uh, or maybe any of Bruce in, uh, season four? Um, do people think that the Joker's actually dead? Um, I, th I think so. Um, if that's what they're going to run with, then they might as well keep him dead. Um, what about Scarecrow? Do you think he's more involved with this season? Um, we obviously see more of him from the trailer and we know that, um, uh, the actor um, is in more of the episodes of this of this season, so um, he will get out of Arkham. Uh, but I wonder what part he has to play in the rest of this season. Uh, I do think that he might be the one uh, behind all of these events or helping someone else out who is behind all this. Um, or if he was actually helping Joker out um, in luring the Titans into, into uh, Red Hood or... Uh, because I'm not sure if Jason himself would be behind this to make Scarecrow try to, you know, low-key kind of help uh, bring or bait the Titans uh, with uh, Dick Grayson uh, into into his overall plan here. Um, what do you guys think? Who do you think is really involved? Do you think um, they'll stop Jason Todd, a.k.a. Red Hood, in this season? Do you think he'll be converted back? Do you think... Jason will snap out of it uh, and then just continue to uh, be Red Hood, but somehow join the Titans. Um, do we see? Do you think we'll actually see a future Robin? Um, Tim Drake is, comes to mind here. I'm not sure if we'll see him. Uh, although Batman might try to you know, again bring another Robin into it, like he does in the in the comics. So um, overall, though, I would say these three episodes. Um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give uh, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because I do think this season is uh, better um, than I was hoping for, uh, or maybe it actually just met my expectations of, of what I wanted to see um, out of Titans. So I'm gonna give this a solid eight out of ten. What do you guys think? Uh, might being a little bit too generous. Do we think it's uh, eight out of ten worthy? Do you guys think it's a little bit better, uh, or do you think it's not as good? Do you think they're not on the right track with a lot of things? Um, I will say I really hope that the story uh, and the plot points and the character developments. Um, I hope they don't go the li like the lazy route with the rest of this season. So. Um, I, I really hope this pace continues uh, and that they don't decline uh, or descend from where they are right now. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, I will be covering the rest of the season on a weekly basis, as always. Uh, and if you uh, have any questions for us, please uh, give us a shout out on Twitter or Instagram. You can follow us at at the Real Heroes Show. Uh, post some comments in there. We'll get a little conversation going. And until next time. Peace out.